Hi everybody, my name is Marta Mama and I'm here to explain you all the references about Drag Race España All Stars So yeah, thank you for noticing I'm looking a little bit better My eczema went away, I'm still fucked, screwed and moving There's no plant here and you cannot see but my house is completely empty right now uh, it's very early in the morning, but we got the snatch game to talk about so I have to find time from wherever I can find it So before we start if you want to support my channel or myself in any way uh, You have my PayPal account down below. I want to thank all these lovely people You guys are so cute and I don't know. I love all the messages of people they send me through PayPal. Uh, Erica reminded me that uh, last week I didn't say stay queer um, in the last portion of the video. So I hope no one has stopped staying queer uh, because I forgot to say so. So I hope I find you even more queerer than last week. Is this the season where everyone makes out with everyone? I don't know, but there was a lot of like making out and kissing in this episode, isn't that true? I I'm here for it, I'm the girl that loves making out with absolutely everyone, but... This episode we have the snatch game when the episode starts. Pinchadora has just left, so Pinchadora right before leaving, she does a little, little, little imitation of uh, Veneno and I think that's because she knows that the next episode was going to be the snatch game and she wanted to show that she can not only do Lola Flores, like she won her snatch game in her season, but she can also do Veneno. So right before leaving, she turns around and tells Setless, pues si no me hubiera querido, tú no me hubiera show. Something like that. I'm not good. I would fail snatch game 100%. But yeah, that's so yeah, I saw you. I saw you Pinchadora. And we also get to know that Ornella had voted for Onyx. Interesting. I thought she was going to go the other way, but yeah, you never know. So what it looks like is that the girls are like there's some type of alliance, not 100% because it's only one episode, but the girls are voting in favor of the girls of their season, which is interesting because we only have two people from season one, four people from season two, and three people from season three. So if we follow that logic, the winner should be someone from season two. This episode we get to know that it's the Snatch Game. So we're going to get right into the references because I know for a fact that you guys didn't know one single character. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to explain them as briefly as possible, okay? I'm not going to give you guys a biography of each one of them. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> but before we start with the girls, we're gonna start with the guest judges for the Snatch Game, the guest people. These are Yola Berrocal and Yurena. Um, of course, queer icons, but they are icons of like trash TV. Um, it's difficult to explain, but you know, the, these like trash TV shows where they create all this drama out of like people. So Yola Rocal is this like huge, super into plastic surgery bimbo and Yurena was like a singer that sang very, very, very poorly, but it was kind of epic. They have both been in several reality shows and it's just like trashy TV people that we love. Those are the guest judges and actually some of the Snatch Game characters as well. So. Let's get into it. Ornella plays José Luis Moreno. Uh, José Luis Moreno was a ventriloquist first, but he also was a producer for TV. And in like the 90s, he in, like instead, or in addition of being a producer, he started hosting these TV shows. So that's how we got to know him. Uh, he is known for a lot of stuff. He is a very dark character in Spain. Um, of course he's gay, but not like super like openly like tells everyone, but everyone knows. Um, he is known for like saying, you are not going to be on, this is public television, okay? Like he's very known for telling certain artists like you're not going to be on television anymore. Or, you know, being that type of like, we don't like that type of people. He's 
a little bit of a psychopath. The puppet that he had, Roque Feliz, he had several puppets. And the whole shtick was that he would be just like normal, demure stuff. And the puppet is the one that would say the outrageous stuff. Uh, in his act, I mean, L later in real life, it's a lot different. They're making a lot of references to a little like hatchet or an, an axe on the head that Ornella didn't get to show in her Snatch Game, but that's because uh, some years ago, uh, Jose Luis Moreno was in every single newspaper because uh, these like group of people br broke into his home and just, yeah, it was not a nice situation and there was an axe on his head and it was terrible and they stole a lot of like money and jewelry from him so terrible thing to happen to absolutely anyone but yeah she goes there and she goes there often so just for some context okay she's taking that one thing that is a little bit you know complicated and she's making humor about that so uh, other than being a victim, José Luis Moreno has always been this person that, I don't know, everyone is a little bit afraid of and he is a little bit creepy. Uh, but Ornella did a good job. She just, I think she didn't find the airtime or the jokes. Uh, she looked very much like him, right? And I don't know. I, I, one thing that I loved about this Snatch Game, that you can really see that the male characters are in way more drag the the female characters and i think that's super funny if you look at onyx on the other way her makeup looks like crazy and ornella as well so this was like a pretty good imitation it just wasn't and it was funny because she went there and she had the jokes uh it was that i don't know she couldn't interact with the other people she ornella's kind of chill anyway so and there was so many like crazy characters going on but yeah, she couldn't find her voice 100% and she wasn't the funniest, to be honest. So yeah, that's Ornella. Then Seth Glass plays Alex Givaja. Alex Givaja is like, was an influencer that became like a household name and was in other, I think, reality TV shows. I have never watched any reality TV. I don't even own a television but this, I'm not too familiar with some of the like reality TV people, but I'll just let you know, okay? But this is an influencer and the whole thing about Alex Givaja is being anti-bullying and spreading positivity. That's why she's saying like, oh, this is a shield, you cannot insult me, like that. Uh. And she's like super bubbly, like exactly what you're, exactly what you're seeing, the most, fruity person that you could ever imagine, um, hairline going this far, that's exactly Alex Givaja. Um, Setlas did a very, very good job and she could find her voice and her moment and she could play and she could improv. And that's amazing because in her Snatch Game she did a terrible job. So we're very, very impressed with her. Another huge redemption was Paquita. Uh, she is playing Carmen de Mairena. Who is Carmen de Mairena? Another person that became famous through like trash TV. This is a trans woman that lived in Barcelona and she was very famous because everything that came out of her mouth was so, so, so ranchy. Uh, this epic like trans woman, she worked in the street and prostitution for all her life. So everything that she would say would be very, very, very sexual. And if you pay attention or if you understand some Spanish, you would see that the way that she speaks is kind of similar to the way that um, Paca La Piraña speaks and the way that everything rhymes, everything has like a very ranchy sexual rhyme. And that's how they spoke. Like that was the funny thing to say. Like you would say anything that rhymes and is very, very ranchy. Um, the prosthetics on Paquita is like, wow, I did not recognize who that person was. I thought it was Sagittaria because I'll talk about Sagittaria later, but I thought this person was Sagittaria until she started speaking. I didn't even recognize Paquita. I think this was such a smart choice for her because of her snatch game was so bad as Peppa Pig, but she could do basically that character from that snatch game. 
uh, in a correct way being Carmen de Mairena. Carmen de Mairena is, of course, an icon for trans people and for queer people all around Spain, especially if they're from like my generation, like from the late 80s or even the early 90s, they know her as well. Um, so we love to see her. It is true that we didn't see a lot of conversation from Paquita and maybe that was the thing that kept her from being on the top. I'm not sure because as you know, I will never understand the guest, the judges decisions here, but well. Sagitaria was Rosario Flores, Rosarillo. Rosario Flores is the daughter of Lola Flores. If you even look at the snatch game thing on the table, there is a little picture of Pinchadora playing Lola Flores, like Rosario has a little picture of her mom. Uh, yeah, so Lola Flores, the mom, had uh, three children and the three were in showbiz. Antonio Flores very sadly passed away many, many years ago, and now we have two sisters. They're always on TV. Um, when the whole Snatch Game starts, Sagitaria is turned around and then she turns, right? That's because she is a judge in the Spanish version of The Voice. Uh -huh. So Rosario Flores is supposed to be this like bubbly, very flamenco, very Andalusian artist. And Sagitaria has a very hard time doing that. This would be a very, very easy character for Paquita, for example. But Sagitaria is not from that region of Spain. She has a hard time, I think, understanding the difference between just being from the South and being funny. I think it happens in the US as well and in you know any other country where they have a very heavy uh, Southern accent. Um, you know, sometimes people just do the accent and think just that is funny. It's not bad. There's a certain like charm that goes with it. She didn't do anything terribly wrong, but as you know, Sagittaria was one of my favorite snatch games of all time. And this one, I think she tried, but she couldn't find her voice. She couldn't find what was funny about the character other than being from the South. And yeah, it was... It was hard to see. I it was I was like rooting for her. I wanted to do good. Samantha Blaze and Rafael. Rafael is one of the most classic Spanish singers. He is the, this guy, and yeah, she looks like him and she speaks like him. For me, this was not a top performance because other than just the singing. Uh, and the olive oil, oh, the olive oil that she had in every single thing is because uh, Rafael is from Linares, from Jaén. That's the region of Spain known for the olive oil. They're big olive oil producers. So that's why she has the olive oil. Like, I'm from this region, so that's what I have. Um, other than the singing and the olive oil, there wasn't a lot of, like, real factual jokes that we can talk about. But uh, she did a good job. She looked like him. She kind of, she sounded like him. She was funny. It's just that I don't know if she didn't have enough airtime or if she, uh, there wasn't really some tangible jokes that we can talk about. But she did, she did very, very well. And I'm happy that she got to show the Snatch Game because for her season, she had prepared six characters, just in case, six characters. <laughs> so yeah. Then, of course, Poopy Poison. If you remember Poopy Poison, in her season, she played Karina. She did amazing. She should have won. Uh, in th the third season, she was like the guest judge and she went with Karina, playing Karina. So we already knew that whoever she was going to play was going to be very good. Uh, but she decided to play Tamara Falco. Okay, Tamara Falco is this person the easiest way that I can explain her is that she is um, Enrique Iglesias. And Julio Iglesias Jr. He is Enrique Iglesias' half-sister, okay? So Tamara's mother is Isabel Preisler. Isabel Preisler was married to Julio Iglesias Sr. and she had some children with him. And then she married this other guy uh, from like the aristocracy and the nobility, he's a Marquez, and with him he had some other children, and one of them is Tamara. It's kind of like the Kardashians and the Jenners, like having children from two separate parents, but they're also very famous. 
just that they're famous for like different reasons. Uh, Tamara is of course part of the mobility, the upper class, and she is known to be the poshest and the most like snob person you can imagine. And she speaks like in real life, she speaks in like the dumbest, super, super posh way that you can imagine. This, it was so amazing because this is literally Tamara Falco, like the realness. Like usually when you do a Snatch Game character, you would make it a little bit over the top. If you think about any of the winners for the past seasons, even like Lola Flores or Carmen Ayuso, like all of them have been like super over, over, over the top. Even the one from Sharon when she did uh, her, like, but this one is absolutely not over the top. This is 100% how Tamara Folko speaks in her everyday life. It's every single thing she does, every single, single, like, it's exactly, exactly her. It's not an over the top character. She brought the realness. Maybe it was not funny for you guys if you don't know who Tamara Falco is, but we know who she is very, very well. And she is on TV and in the newspapers like all the time. So we really, really, really know how Tamara Falco speaks. And this was just, and she was also funny. Like she was able to be like super, super funny. There's this super funny joke between Alex Givaja and uh, Tamara Falco, between Setless and Poopy Poison, that I really don't know how they translated it because I got no time to see the translation yet. But um, it, it, Setless gives Poopy Poison a shoe, like a boot. And she says, hey, if you're not feeling well, here you have a shoe. Because the shoe like consoles you because in Spanish, the word consoles means like it has a soul, like the shoe has the soul of the shoe. So I'm consoling you, giving you a shoe. It was just so unexpected, cute and dumb between these two people that speak with a kind of similar voice, like this super posh accent, uh, super cute, super funny, super like improvised and natural and nice. And she was like, get me out of here, please. Like these people are crazy. They're saying all these sexual stuff. Oh my God, I just can't. I just can't, please, please. Like she was so bad. Judy G was Aramis Fuster, another queen of trash TV. Aramis Fuster is a very, very, very well-known psychic. And she became very famous, not only for being psychic, but because of her crazy personality. Um, she, Judy G, used like every single famous thing about Aramis Fuster. By the way, Aramis Fuster was in several like TV shows and reality shows with the guest judges with Yurena and Yola Berrocal. They're like from the same circle of people that got famous in the same, around the same time in the same TV shows. So uh, it was funny seeing like Yurena and Yola Berrocal's reaction to Aramis Fuster. And she used every single thing Aramis is known about. Alzheimer, Alzheimer, Alzheimer. idiomas querida. She was reading the cards with Uno cards, like you guys. That it, it was being a it was a very good snatch game. Like the whole thing was very, very good. But she it, it took her a little bit to find her voice and to say like actual tangible jokes. She would give a lot of these references to Aramis, but maybe not like the tangible jokes sometimes. That's how it felt for me, at least. And then she just chopped all her hair off. Of course, this is something that Aramis did on TV, but she, like, Juriti did this in real life. Like, I am so much here for it. Of course, you know, we love a bald queen. Uh, I, uh, you know, we were all like, what? Because she is the trans girl. Like, her hair means a lot for her. Uh, and she actually did it. I applaud uh, you, DJ. I salute you. You got it. The hair has nothing to do with your gender or your gender expression or your femininity. You're not going to be one tiny little bit less feminine with no hair. It's going to make no difference and it's going to make wearing wigs a lot easier. So, uh, Judy G did a good job. She just didn't get like the spotlight, you know? 
Onyx, Onyx, poor thing. Onyx, uh, the makeup was just impeccable. The makeup was like tens across the board. Onyx was playing Caprile, Lorenzo Caprile. Lorenzo Caprile is a very well known like designer uh, in Spain and he is known to be like the judge in this reality TV sewing contest that we have, like similar to Drag Race, you know, the reality TV contest. The sewing one, Caprile is the judge there and he's known for being very, very harsh. He always speaks in this voice and he's like a little bit like that. Uh, the makeup was amazing. She had worked on this character and she had worked on these jokes, but uh, comedy is just something that Onyx is, has absolutely nothing to do with uh, Onyx's character, with Onyx's drag. Uh, she's not about the comedy and things would just like fly like over her. She didn't get a lot of airtime either. But I mean, just the characterization was so amazing. These people are so, so, so talented. It was just, it wasn't funny. She couldn't find the airtime. So yeah. So that was the Snatch Game. I'm sure there's a lot of like specific jokes, references or things that I'm forgetting. So leave me your questions down below. We get to know that this week's runway is going to be one of my favorite themes ever, which is the like redemption theme like take a look that was bad from your season and make it all over again i love this theme and it's uh, one thing that is very nice and that i always like about drag race españa and i have to say it is i always love the conversations in the workroom the way that they can be like vulnerable even if they feel like they weren't too natural like they have meaningful conversations and i love this conversation with uh, Jurigi talking about the fact that she cut her hair and what she thinks about like cis passing and being feminine and gender binary and all these very very interesting things and I think that is one of the best things about Drag Race España. The guest judge for the runway this week is Silvia Abril. Silvia Abril is a very 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 famous comedian and actress I guess and like TV host. Um, She's married to another very famous comedian and TV host, but I think it's not nice talking about one person's husband when you're describing them. Um, just for some reference, if you have been watching my videos for some time, if you remember when we talked about Eurovision, there was this guy that went to Eurovision as like a funny comedy act uh, called Chiquili Cuatre. And Silvia Abril was actually one of the backup dancers. Just for a little reference for you guys. So she is very well known. We love her, she's so funny. She is very cute. So yeah. This runway, you guys, was so crazy. I hope you guys loved it as much as I loved it because I loved it so much. Um, so let's start with the girls. First up, Setlas. Like, what the fuck? Like, what is this? Okay, so, first of all, this animatronic wolf, please take a look at the legs. The legs go, like, Setless is hiding under this, like, navy blue velvet thing, and the legs go, like, outside of that, and they are tied to Setless boots. So it looks like they are moving when Sethless is moving. Like, what? What? Like, how did he do this? How did Sethless do this? This is so crazy. And then she takes off the whole wolf, which was just a prop. That was just like a little proppy thing. And she reveals this whole look of like this blood queen. Like the wolf has actually eaten Little Red Riding Hood and then she becomes this like zombie crazy princess out of the ashes and out of his like rib cage and she's all like blood and crystals and I thought this was so cool. There was the presentation, like everything was like tens across the board. Setless is not here to play. Well, then Paquita decided to redo her 
Hairapalooza, like with Palooza, like what was it called? The hair look. Um, she has this like period dress and the very intricate, amazing hair with like the ship. That little ship is supposed to be one of the little boats that Christopher Columbus traveled to America with, like the Pinta, La Niña, and uh, Santa Maria. I don't know if you guys know, but Christopher Columbus, like the starting point for her first trip and second and third uh, was actually where we are from, like Paquita and I and, you know, this area of the south of Spain. So that's like a little reference there to, you know, Christopher Columbus is not the most amazing and woke reference to have, but it is one thing this area is known for. <laughs> but she didn't make it about Columbus or anything. It's just that the little boat, that's what it represents. This is supposed to be the character from her season before drowning, something like that. Me, honestly, don't hate me for this. I liked her original season look a little bit more. I know it wasn't so intricate and it's probably like cheaper and whatever, but I liked it a lot more just because it was different. I think it was way more iconic than this one. Maybe no more intricate, but I don't know. I think it was done maybe not in the best way. And I understand that she wanted to remake this one, but I liked the original season more, to be honest. Then Samantha's look. Okay, people are going crazy about this look. Um, I understand that it's a lot better than in her season. I really like that she was wearing prosthetics on her face to make the lips very big, the nose a certain way. You know, I appreciate that very, very much. And there are just a couple of things, just, just, just saying, okay? I understand that you probably feel a different way about this, but every time I see a huge, 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 huge breastplate, for me, in my opinion, there is a certain way of acting with huge boobies that I personally, as a booby carrier, I feel a little bit cringy. Um, you didn't have to show like the full nipple. I think no real boob carrier would be like that or you wouldn't like be touching your nipples and like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like I don't like when drag queens do that with like huge boobs. I think that there are people that can do drag in huge boobs in a very correct manner. And I mean that they act like a normal woman would act with huge boobs. That I am okay with 100%. I think like, for example, Coco Kane can do this very, very well, or she would wear like the hugest breastplate that exists, but she would act like a normal person with boobs. That's because she's one of the girls. Like, you understand she's a doll because of how she acts with boobs. But Samantha's not a girl. And I find it, personally, as a booby carrier, I find it quite cringy. You probably don't think about this in the same way I do. I'm not hating on Samantha. I 100% love Samantha. Uh, I have been defending Samantha this whole time. I only have a little bit of a, like a cringe moment with the dudes that wear huge breastplates and then act like the most like sexual thing about their breastplate. I think the idea was good. I wouldn't have taken out that robe. I wouldn't have shown the, the whole nipple. I think you didn't need that. I would have made, made it a little more like fashion -y couture moment instead of like showing the whole thing. Uh, does anyone understand me? I understand that this is a very controversial topic and then there's people that are going to think in a very different way. Uh, I'm sorry if my opinion is not your opinion, but I especially want to hear the opinion of booby carriers, if you ladies or whoever has boobs, if you can give me your opinion about how you feel when you see these like super huge super huge breastplates and how they act with them. Does anyone feel the same way that I do? Anyway, it doesn't matter how I feel. Excellent redemption episode for Samantha. She was able to do the Snatch Game and she was able to objectively 
make her look a lot better. Onyx look, oh poor thing, poor baby. She chose the look for like the doll uh, from her season and she had the same like head for the same look, but then she created this doll, uh, like she's not a porcelain doll anymore. She's now this huge big robot that is coming to destroy the universe. And I, I love the concept and I love how it's done and I love how she uses unconventional material the whole time. And I love that she made this look with her brother and Onyx looks are something I was looking forward to so 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 much and i 100 percent love this look i there's absolutely nothing bad to say about this look i just loved it and i'm so sad that we're not going to get to enjoy more onyx looks this season you know poopy bison chose the look from the infamous first episode of the first season of drag race españa this is the one that where they had like drag on a dime and she got a lot of like bathroom stuff so now she had a very cute outfit made for her. Um, she looks like 12, right, in this outfit. I think it's so funny the way she looks like a small little girl. But yeah, she looks a lot better. This is what she was supposed to do in her season, but she didn't. I love the hair with it. I love the little rubber duckies. Uh, she's looking a lot better. Judy G's look. Like she was doing the little Barbarella number in her season. This look was very different. She did have the cone titties, but I think this is the look that she had to make in the workroom. So this Barbarella look is the whole fantasy, the whole thing. I was just amazed. Instead of having like a little toy gun, like water gun, uh, she had this huge thing and it was fire coming out of the titties. And then there was like popcorn and I thought it was so cute. She looked so amazing. This was perfection. This was, you know, the same look, the same concept, the same 60s vibes. Like everything was the same, but in a whole different way with a lot more money and a lot more time. Uh, so yeah, Sagittaria, this look was her Rosalia look and the glow up, you guys. Um, this look is so cool i'm so much into this like patchwork faux leather thing that she has going on as a person that sews it is so satisfying to see all those seams going in perfectly lining up the star and the it, this look looks so good on her this is like the coolest look and she explains that she wanted to also explain the um, like the evolution of Rosalia of the reference inside this look so Rosalia's next album was Motomami and this is a very like Motomami look shoulders on point the hair super cool the mug is mugging and in general this is like not you know because Sagittaria is always like about the glamour and stuff but she can get Cool. She understands her lines. She understands design. This is a very, 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 very cool look for Sagittaria. Very successful. Tens across the board. She looked amazing. And Ornella Gongora's look. Uh, this was supposed to be her makeover. She was su supposed to be doing this like Cinderella or like Sleeping Beauty. I'm not very sure which one it was. And she did the super cute thing with the little birds that are picking up her dress. And what I like is that this runway is already very much like it has a lot of like storytelling things in the runway, right? Because of the little birds and because of how she's acting and she's turtling. But then there is an extra element. There's always an extra element of storytelling for Nella. She brings like a little bag and she throws it away. And she explains before throwing it away, because it's like a glittery, tiny little bag, she smells it and she said, mm, it stinks. And then she throws it away. It's like, oh, this is supposed to be my garbage bag and I'm throwing it away. And the judges like caught it and explained it. And I thought like it was just adding one more layer. And Ornella always paints like, 
I just don't understand how amazing she is at drag. She is very good at drag, in my opinion. So yeah, that was the runway. I think every single look was super cool. The snatch game, every like every performance was successful in some way. There was not, maybe the worst performances were Sagittaria, yes, and Onyx. But I think in other seasons, they could have been safe. Like, depending on how the snatch game goes, this was a very, very, very successful snatch game. And it was very difficult to choose who was going to be on top, I think. Like, the top two was very clear, but then in the decisions, I think that they put, like, high, like, high safe, like, in the top, Samantha for Rafael. I'm not sure if she was on the top or it was just one of those situations where uh, you're not in the bottom, what we want to talk with you. Maybe it was something like that because it made no sense that Paquita was not in the top three if there was a top three. So that's why I think that there was no top three, really. Or maybe it was Ornella, the top. I'm not sure. Like, it makes no sense that either uh, Samantha Valentines or Ornella were, like, the top three. So I think it was a situation where there was a top two that was pretty clear. And I 100% agree. Top two were Seth Les and Poopy Poison, 100%, no doubt about it. And the bottom two was also very, very clear. We don't, we shouldn't get caught in who was third and low safe. And you guys, we shouldn't be arguing about who is like third, fourth position in one episode you guys okay of course we know how the judging goes so if they are getting the top two and the bottom two right then they are getting the whole thing right do we agree that the top two were setless and poopy poison me personally even though i love paquita whatever i agree with that 100 percent. do we agree that the bottom two were onyx and sagittaria yes we do agree Let's just, the let, rest of the things are not important, okay? I'm counting every single blessing that we get from this panel of judges. So this week, they got it right. I also love the moment where Silvia Abril is talking with Poopy Poison and we get to know this a little more like human side from Poopy Poison and she gets emotional. And when she sees Silvia Abril, who is like a very important comedian in Spain, saying, girl, you got it. You understand comedy. You've got the timing. You know exactly what you're doing. And she's saying all these wonderful stuff to Poopy. And Poopy gets like super emotional and says like, I don't know what's going to happen in this episode or in this TV show. But the validation that you just gave me means the world to me. And she gets emotional. I thought it was super cool, super cute. The lip sync is not such entera by Vico. Okay. This song was like one of the contenders to go to Eurovision. It didn't even go to Eurovision, but it became quite popular in Spain. But then the singer appeared in some interview saying like super nice things about super, super conservative politicians. And it's like, girl, she has been very, very canceled for a very long time, but they filmed this before we knew that, of course. So yeah, that's what that's a little bit of tea behind all of this. If they were filming this right now, they wouldn't have chosen this song, you guys, for sure. The lip sync, what did we think? I thought it was super cute. I think that Sethless did not get the timing of the song. Not the timing, but like the vibe. She was doing the, you know, the it this wasn't the move for that song. It wasn't the flow, it wasn't the vibe of this song. This was much more like a little like girly, happy song. I think Poopy got it correctly. And Sethless, of course, is doing all her like acrobatic stuff and then she blah, blah, blah. But um, there is a certain point of time, which is towards the last part of the lip sync, which is very smart, where Poopy just jumps and lands on her splits. And I think absolutely no one knew that Poopy Poison could do that. So everyone's love was like, it's like seeing Paca la Piranha doing that suddenly. It's like, what? I didn't know you could do that. Um, so yeah, I think even though Sedlas does that 800 times and no one is surprised, 
the one time that Poopy Poison does that, everyone is like, what? <laughs> but yeah, I think Poopy Poison won that lip sync and she got very emotional showing her lipstick and she decided to say goodbye to Onyx, which means that she decided to keep the girl that was from her season. Maybe it was because Onyx has been in the bottom twice. Maybe it is because she is the closest with Sagittaria. Maybe it is because if Sagittaria stays, uh, she will probably keep Poopy Poison there. Um, anyway, I think it's a good decision. Onyx, probably one of my favorite from the whole cast. But I, as I always say, I think Onyx is a great artist that Drag Race is not able to encapsulate and you know, it's not able to present to us in the best form possible you know what i mean like drag is so diverse and drag race only wants to show you this and onyx is like all over here so what drag race is showing us from onyx is like not even the best part so very sad to see onyx goes like everyone is a little bit emotional Setless is heartbroken, of course, and yeah, Onyx is still like making out with every single person that she finds. She, if she finds a, like one of the producers, she's going to make out with him. And I love that about her, like of course. And yeah, that's it. That was the episode. A lot of references. I'm sure I left a lot of things behind. So remember to leave me your comments down below. If you appreciate my content and you want to send me any love this way, uh, again, here you have my PayPal account. Uh, thank you so much for supporting my channel. I love you guys so, so, so much. This is the last video with this background, you guys. So I'll be moving this week with this hand. Um, and yeah, so before I forget, remember to stay queer, okay? I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. <laughs>